Hello everyone, my name is Mumbles, and I would like to welcome you to Solar 2. This is space, the final frontier, and we are merely a potato. Oh, and there's also the entity, he's, you know, he says hi. He's got some other stuff that he'd like to say. Yeah, like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little tutorial, but, but look on the bright side. There's, there's a giant logo in space. Bet you didn't know that. Betcha didn't know that. Let me mess with the uh, sounds ever so slightly. You believe that that was still not like, you know, super high volume? I couldn't. Okie dokie. So what is this game all about? I'm gonna just actually skip like all the uh, the tutorials that I can because I've actually played this game before. Okay, I think he's mostly going to leave us be now. Uh, I will, you know, preface this by saying that if you find the entity annoying, um, yeah, that's kind of his point, to be honest. Like, you know, you are here trying to do your thing in space, and there's this guy just constantly, like, talking to you, belittling you. There's a reason why he does all that, but we'll get around to that. So, what is this game about? It is a, a, 2, -day, a 2D space simulation game with a lot of arcade elements. Uh, right now, we are just an asteroid. And in the top left corner, you can actually see the next stage that we can get to, which is a small planet. And the way we actually get to that stage is by acquiring mass. Now, the, uh, the waypoints, I guess, that you see around us are the different missions that you can do. There's a, you know, different set of missions for each stage. And I'm actually not going to bother uh, showing you the missions for the time being, uh, simply because I would rather just, you know, show you the, the basic gameplay loop. So the point of the game is... Kind of, you know, you make your own fun. There's a lot of mechanics in here, but it is a, a pretty casual game. It's just a 2D space sim style title. Not a whole lot going on in that regard. But it's got a ton of fun little interactions. In my experience, it's, it's an older game. I can't remember when exactly it was actually released, but I'm quite fond of it, actually. And I wanted to, you know, play some more of it, basically. So that's why I kind of installed it again and um yeah i wanted to make a little vid a little video series about the game itself uh my aim would actually be to do all of the story missions that are in the game and maybe grind out a couple achievements as well i'm not gonna promise you know to do every single one of them simply because some of them are just i don't know not that fun but i guess we'll see i guess we'll see how much fun we have so how do we acquire mass we've already uh you know showcased it once before as an asteroid you're just looking to hit stuff that is smaller than you and this is going to be like a recurring thing in this game where essentially you want to kind of treat it like a katamari style game where anything that is smaller than you is mostly just something that you can either destroy or potentially use to some advantage and anything that is bigger than you is most of the time a threat of some kind that you need to be careful with now, as an asteroid, you know, like, right now there's not a whole lot going on. There's just a bunch of rocks, we just watched the Big Bang a second ago. And as we are also gaining mass here by crashing into stuff, you know, other objects are doing the same. Like you can see here, that's, that's a planet. Now, like I said, the game's pretty casual, and if we wanted to mess around with that planet, we could. I mean, we're pretty massive, we could just do that, and then it gets, you know, knocked all the way over. However, we are now just a small asteroid because we respawned. Now, we could try to find the same planet and, you know, kind of bully it. It's actually right there. Oh, and it's no longer there because it hit too many asteroids. We've inadvertently killed a planet, but it costs our life. So I guess, you know, there's a lesson there. I'm not sure, to be honest. Like, look, I was never that good at philosophy. But we're actually going to try to become a planet of our own, because that seems kind of fun. You know, that, that purple orb, it was kind of chill. This this blue one here looks kind of nice. Maybe we can become something like that. Let's, let's give it our shot, I guess. And, you know, there's bigger stuff as well. As you can see, that's already a solar system. That's a massive, massive asteroid right there, by the way. That's probably going to turn into a planet soon. And uh, you might notice that there's ships around these planets. That's because they are actually life planets. That, uh can't tell what that asteroid is doing, but it's it's doing something. Well, let's get our hands on some more mass, actually, and see if we can become a planet as well. Now, as I was saying, the game doesn't have a, a clear beginning and end point. 
in that regard. Like, you know, there's achievements, there's challenges, there's story missions, there's physics options, and eventually there's god options. So there's a multitude of ways you can have fun, but it's not like the game really has a, a scoring method, if you will. Oh, and you know, now we're getting some more tutorials about the way planets work. So if you remember, just a second ago, we were mostly crashing into stuff just so that we would gain mass. Uh, planets don't work that way. Like right now, if you notice, we have 28 mass. Now, if I hit this asteroid here, then we go down to 26. We basically lose the mass that the object that we collided with had. So we got to be careful with that. And now, you know, we're being taught how to actually, like, you know, you might be wondering, okay, but then how do I gain mass as a planet? Well, it's simple. You gotta get things to orbit you, like that. We've also seen an example of that in the wild, so in that regard, the game's quite good. And uh, if you're very, very, you know, attentive, you may also notice that the four waypoints are different than before. Because as I was saying, at every stage of the game, there's a different set of missions that you get to do. A lot of these are multi-stage, so, for example, you could go to, like, I don't know, like, the top waypoint for us right now, finish it, and there's probably, like, one or maybe two other, you know, stages of the mission to, to still do after, to follow it up. Uh, the one interesting thing that needs to be mentioned is that the objects that you have orbiting you still follow the same rules. I'm gonna try to, to do that. As you can see, like, that asteroid now has more mass. You can still have stuff collide, it still behaves exactly as, as you would believe it would behave, uh, which is kind of interesting. But for the time being, we're just looking to get stuff to orbit us. And once we do, we can press E, I believe, on the, the basic configuration to collect that mass. And, you know, now that gave us eight extra mass, so we're slightly bigger. Not very noticeable yet, um, but over time you'll, you'll get to see how much larger we actually become. Now, um, I want to basically do kind of a loop of the game, and you'll see what I mean once we get to, to the end of it, I suppose. But again, it's a very loose term there because, like I said, there's not really a, a clear beginning and end point, I suppose. Um, kind of to just showcase the mechanics, and, you know, over the next couple videos we'll get into the story missions as time goes on. Uh, now if you kind of are intrigued and you'd like to try the game for yourself, then there's going to be a link to a Google Drive where you can download the DRM-free version of the game to try it out. Uh, eventually, if I, you know, succeed in what I'm attempting to do here, which is build a, an actual complete save file, I'm going to also upload that there. And again, I'm not promising a 100% safe file simply because, like I said, I don't know if I'll do all the achievements. I probably won't do all the challenges because I have no idea what they're like, to be honest. Uh, but once I have a safe file, it's also gonna be up in that drive because that drive belongs to me, actually. So I urge you, if you know you like what you see, to download it, install it, and give it a try. The, the game runs practically on anything. It's 2D. Sometimes it can get a little crazy, but you gotta do some insane stuff to, to make this game, like, chug or lag in any way. Uh, we might do some of that, though, over time. But uh, I will say that, again, if you try it out and have fun with it, I would also recommend actually buying the game. It's not very expensive, it's available on Steam. You can get it uh, from the developer himself if you want the DRM-free version, just, you know, as like a, a token gesture, since if you've tried the game with my link, then you probably already have the DRM-free version of the game. But, you know, if you want your own copy, I guess, you could just go to their website. I believe the name is Muradai. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. You can see it right there. Uh, they still have a, a website where you can actually get the game. I believe it's on the Humble Bundles site as well, in a multitude of other places. I'm pretty sure you could also get the game on your phone through, like, the App Store. Uh, but yeah, it's basically just, you know, a, a nice little message. Like, if you, you know, end up trying the game, having fun with it, just support the developer, please. Like, they, they spent some time on it. I, I would appreciate it if you did that, at least. So, thanks for that. But moving on from that, we're now, you know, trying to get slightly more mass. And as you can see, there's more stages we get to explore. The next is a life planet. We've already seen a handful of those. They send out ships. And the little noise that we just heard leads me to believe that, indeed, there are more life planets this way. So that's kind of what we want to be. They got ships. They fly around. We don't want to go too close. There's one interesting... Thing in this game, which is uh, part of the arcade style gameplay here. Everything is automatically hostile, basically. The life that you have on your own planet, or your planets, once you're actually a solar system, um, are friendly to you. They won't just attack your stuff. 
and they're going to do their best to protect you. So essentially, like, we'll, we'll showcase that once for a life planet, but they're, they, they're gonna try to cooperate with us for the most part. Everything else is automatically hostile, so any other planet that has life on it, as long as it's not part of your solar system, is going to just, you know, open fire whenever they see you. And it's gonna turn into an all-out war, basically. Uh, there are also so-called nomads, marked by the color white. These are just ships that roam space. They don't have a planet anymore, and there's a number of reasons why they don't have a planet, which again, over uh, time, you will get to see for yourself. And they are just openly hostile to anything and everything. These guys are mega annoying, regardless of what you're trying to do, because as time goes on, um, you know, as you want to acquire even more mass, you'll need more asteroids, you'll need more planets, and the nomads kind of destroy everything. They fight other ships, they fight the red ships, they fight your ships, they fight the rocks in space, they fight the planets in space, they fight, you know, neutral life planets, they will kill anything and everything. They will even attack different suns, basically, if that's the closest thing to them. So they're very frustrating to, to deal with. But over time, they get a lot easier to deal with uh, once you have life of your own, which we do now. And again, the entity is here to, to let us know that we've done something. Now, currently, you can see a little uh, evolution meter in the top left there. Basically, that's how long it takes for, I guess, advanced life forms to develop on your planet. Now, how advanced are we talking? Well, you know, they got ships. They're, they're a little bit ahead of us because they got actual spacecraft that, you know, can, can go into space. I don't know if it can come back. It usually doesn't. Well, not unless it's a, a burning wreck. They can also make shields, which then slowly recharge. Shields are pretty useful, and I'm gonna try to showcase uh, what I mean by that. So right now, take, a, take note of our mass here. It's 86, and we have a shield. We're gonna, you know, hit this asteroid here. And you may notice that our mass is the same, because as long as we have a shield online, we're not gonna lose any mass. It protects us from pretty much anything. Of course, you could very easily mess this up, but you could even hit another planet that doesn't have a shield and not lose mass, as long as you have your shield. Once it's you know, once it's gone, though, you probably don't want to hit another planet. And you can see that we can still progress further. Um, in this game, once you are a life planet, the next stage is a small star, which is a pretty big leap, and I'm, you know, I'm not a, a star scientist. I wouldn't know about these things, but I don't think that's how stars are actually formed. I think they just kind of, based on what little knowledge I have, they kind of existed kind of since the Big Bang. They just kind of happened. But, uh, look, I, I, I didn't read the lore, you know. I, I don't read the wiki articles about this game. The, the wiki articles in this case are just, you know, science journals about our actual lives, but, like I said, I don't, I don't play the game of life for the lore. I, I don't know why I play it, to be honest. I, I guess I have an ongoing subscription. Dude, like, I got Grandfather Dan, you know, my, my parents just kind of subscribed me when I was born, and I, ne I never had the heart to, to quit. <laughs> But either way, um, it's good for us to still keep gaining mass. Now, you could just, you know, be a life planet and do some stuff. And uh, you may also notice that the game tracks your kills, and there's also an XP bar. The two are very, very much connected. Basically, you gain experience by getting kills, which we're gonna try to get a couple here. You know, there's like two ships there. We have a couple ships of our own. They're gonna fight each other. We also have turrets. Those little uh, things on our planet are actually turrets. As you gain more experience, you get more of those as well. We're right now just kind of losing this battle more than anything. But we now have a different style of ship. I believe there's three different kinds of ship in this game. This is what I like to call a gunboat. It pretty much just shoots rockets and it's kind of effective. Um, it can get taken out by a bunch of stuff, and since you don't get to control what it shoots at, it's this is kind of like an auto-battler, but I think it came out a long time before auto-battlers were even a thing. Um, you know, you're mostly relying on the AI to just kind of pick a target. Sometimes it can be amazing, sometimes it can be greatly frustrating. There's a third kind of ship that I believe we've already seen. It looks kind of like a space crab. It looks really cool, and it's got, like, Giga Blasters, deals tremendous amounts of damage. Um, but it, I believe, is only created when you're actually in, like, kind of a war, like an open war with someone. Because, like, right now, again, we're not really creating ships. We have, like, one ship that is kind of just here, and now that we're, you know, fighting, our planet is gonna be like, oh, crap, we need more ships, because, you know, we're, we're actually in a conflict, so then we're gonna keep making different kinds of ships. But as you can see, I don't really have a, a say as to what kind of ship we make. Right now, it's just the, the tiny little rocket ships. And those are fine, though. They got blasters, and they're quite fast to produce. So there is at least that. 
And we're gonna try to, you know, grind out some experience here, basically, just for the fun of it. And like I said, this is uh, currently not a very involved process. It gets a little more complex as you become a solar system because suddenly, you know, positioning becomes significantly more important. You have potentially other planets in your solar system taking part in the conflict itself. You know, it becomes a little more involved, I suppose. But for the time being, literally, like, just doing a, a 1v1 in the depths of space against another life planet. Oh, and there's the, the spacecraft ship that I was talking about, actually. You can see the blasters are mostly, like, just breaking through our shields super fast. Uh, but yeah, in like a 1v1 fight, it mostly boils down to where and when your stuff gets spawned and whether or not, you know, your, uh, your own ships hit the asteroids orbiting you, which has been happening a lot to us if you've been paying attention. But yeah, essentially you gain XP. Uh, I believe you need about 15 to 20 XP, depending on what kind of ships you've been killing, to basically get the the highest level of life that you can get. And again, you know, let's not necessarily go into the philosophy that uh, Solar 2 has, where apparently armed conflict is the only thing that can force species to evolve. Seems kind of bleak, but then at the same time, you gotta think like, I mean, look, uh, you know, conflicts put a lot of evolutionary pressure on different life forms to succeed. If you're threatened, you're probably gonna, you know, try to biologically improve yourself in whatever way you can or create better technology so that you have a higher chance of survival. So maybe it's correct. It, you know, like I said, it seems a little sad because like, wow, like, that's so sad that, you know, you gotta fight to to improve. But I'm like, maybe you do in, in the world as well. I guess, you know, nowadays we don't necessarily do the same style of fighting as we used to. It's more, uh... You know, you, you have to focus your efforts in a different way, but I don't know. Again, I, I don't think I have the philosophical training or knowledge to really engage in such high-level discussion, but it, it's definitely an interesting topic that we could maybe get into once I, you know, read a book or two. And, uh, yeah, we've actually wiped out life on that planet. Now, you might think, like, holy crap, did you just commit genocide? And I didn't. I'm the planet, I'll have you know. I'm the rock. I'm not the people with the guns. But the people with the guns that live on me did just, in fact, like, kill at least one, you know, species that used to live on that little green rock there. The thing is, though, if we leave the, the planet alone, it's gonna get some mass again, and new life will develop on it. So, in that regard, the life that you have is not necessarily the most important thing, unless you view it as such. Again, you make your own fun, so if, like, your gameplay objective is to have, like, super high-developed life on all of your planets, and you never want to have, like, a zero XP, zero kill society, I suppose, on, on a planet of your own, then, yeah, you might be really sad and maybe even mourn the fact that some of your guys died. But for the most part, if you basically just run away, like, if we just lost the society that we have right now on our planet, uh, it would come back. We would have the same roughly 20 second little evolution bar, and after that we'd have a turret, a shield, we'd start making ships, everything would be, you know, just back to normal for us. In-game, you know, like an entire civilization collapsed, and probably 10,000, maybe millions of years passed in the interim period. That's kind of the interesting thing about this game, like, when you're just, you know, playing it as the, the planet, you get a completely different, unique perspective. And I kind of like that detachment, you know, space is massive and scary, but in this game it's very pleasant to be in, because you're not the tiny guys on one of those ships. You're, a, you're at least a planetoid of some kind, an asteroid, a small planet, a life planet, a star of a different size, or maybe even something greater. And when, you know, when you're in a different weight class and like that, it's suddenly a very different experience being out and about in space. But what we're gonna do, instead of just, you know, like, babbling on about stuff, is get a little bit more mass so that I can show you another stage of being in this game. And like I said, this current video is mostly going to just go through all of these uh, with a little bit of a, a babble period to, to tell you a little bit about the different... I wouldn't even know if I would call them nuances, but let's call them that for the time being. Like, a little, little details, I suppose, uh, about the different stages that you can be in. Maybe we'll get into some features as well afterwards. But our end goal here is basically to just go through it all and showcase it, and then we'll get into some story missions, hopefully. But yeah, the, the game has a ton of fun little music. It's, it's just very chill to play, and I, I keep throwing that term around. I, I've noticed, actually, in, in my time of, of recording video games, but I really do like a nice little laid-back style game. I think I'm wrong, I can see the, the benefit of a stressful setting, and I think uh, being able to create any kind of atmosphere in a game, whether that's stressful or just very, very chill, I think is is a great thing. And maybe the stress is harder to, to create, since 
you know, you could just step away from the computer at, at any given moment. Like, how stressed can, can you really get from a video game? Oh, apparently very stressed. Like, at least when it comes to me, I can get very stressed about video games. And I've raged a lot over the years as well that I'm not necessarily proud of. It's, it's uh, you know, it's a character trait that I could probably uh, work a little bit harder on, but uh, we'll get there, hopefully. So this solar system is way, way ahead of us. Maybe, you know, someday if we, if we put in the work, we'll look like that. And I mean, we're not that far away now. We are almost a small star. And I mean, if only it was as easy to become a star in real life as it is in this game. I've just been, you know, floating about, occasionally pressing, pressing E on my keyboard. And now we are a small star. And basically, um, the big change here that's going to be happening is... Essentially, right now, we, instead of getting asteroids to orbit us, we're getting planets to orbit us. Because we can't get the asteroids to orbit us. We do have gravity, and we can, you know, like, move them about, but eventually if we don't move, they're just gonna hit us. And as you can see, they still take mass. Because we don't have a shield. Now, stars don't make shields, because you would need life forms to create shields for you. So this is where life, you know, life planets come into play, because we have a planet, and as I mentioned, the game is very meticulous in the sense that everything works the same way in the different stages of the game. The, the only difference is, whatever stage you're in, you're gonna see more of those objects, basically. So if you're a solar system, you're probably gonna see more solar systems. If you're merely a planet, you're probably gonna see more planets, maybe slightly fewer life planets. If you become a life planet, you start seeing more life planets. It's a little bit like level scaling in a lot of games, except in this game, it's not absolute trash, because it just means it's slightly more exciting to play the game. Because at any point, like, space is just so vast, you run into a solar system or a life planet that you can't fight, you can just run away. It's totally fine. So now there's a couple things we can do. We have a couple planets orbiting us, uh, and that, now is a good time to mention, you know, this is the basic overlay that you have. You see your, your star, and you see the, the planets being attached to it, basically. And you see the distance between the celestial objects with that little line. You can also press O with the basic configuration and actually see the orbits. Now, this is very useful later on when you're trying to maneuver. Uh, for the time being, I think we're fine with just two planets. But essentially, there's a couple decisions we gotta make. Um, do we like these planets? Do we like the design? I mean, they're kind of nice. I like the, the, the color purple. I think it's pretty elegant. So we could keep them. If we want to keep them, then what we want to do is essentially uh, orbit, like get a couple asteroids to orbit them. And as you can see, we can totally do that. It's a little bit more complex than when we were the planet because we got to actually account for the fact that there's a star now and you know that has greater gravity than the planet itself. However, if we get the planet close enough, if we line everything up correctly, then the asteroids will orbit the planet instead. And then you know we get to consume the asteroids to collect mass. If we collect enough mass, then the planet will shift into a life planet, and then we'll have ships again. Now, if you're a solar system, I believe once you have two or maybe three planets that have life on them, then the, the actual life forms will be nice enough to give you, the star, a shield. Which does the same thing as a planetary shield, but it's, I would say, maybe even more useful. If there is such a thing. Because as a star, sometimes it's very difficult to dodge things. And uh, once you get into actual interstellar battles, and in this case, interstellar battle meaning, you know, solar system to solar system, like, wars, um, the AI has a nasty habit, and this is something that, you know, you're gonna have to pick up as a solar system as well, of just ramming stuff into your star to deal a huge amount of damage. And the damage comes in the form of losing mass, of course, uh, which potentially means that you either die if your mass reaches low enough. Like right now, if we took almost 1,200 points of, of mass damage, if you will, then we would die and we'd come back as, a, as another small star with probably fewer mass. Um, th so the shield really helps with that because it kind of, you know, saves you from some of the collisions. So life in that regard is useful. It can be annoying though, because once you have life, as I mentioned, if we collide with an asteroid or a planet, then the life on our planets is kind of going to go, you know, crazy and they'll start shooting the asteroids because they're scared. And I mean, I get that, like, you know, we have entire movies about, I believe it's Deep Impact, that is about uh, an asteroid hitting like Earth and how they try to, to stop that from happening. It's an old movie and I, I honestly don't remember if I've actually watched it or not. I know that it gets played all the time on, on local TV, or at least it used to. 
So, and I mean, look, it's a pretty freaky scenario. Like, I, if, you know, if I was listening to the news one day and, and they were just like, oh yeah, there's an asteroid on collision course with Earth, I don't think I would take it well. So, in this regard, I can totally understand why, you know, the life forms on our planets would freak the hell out, basically. But in some cases, it can be very annoying because, you know, you are a solar system. You got big plans. Maybe you're looking to increase the mass of, of the planet so that it gets even larger to potentially, you know, like, you're trying to increase the mass of another planet but end up hitting an asteroid with a different planet. And then they suddenly are destroying the asteroids that you wanted to absorb. It's a whole thing. It's it's like, the, the life forms are like your kids, but, you know, you don't really... They're not very well disciplined. You can you can give them guidelines that they'll mostly follow, but you don't, you can't really tell them like, hey, uh, ignore asteroids for the next two minutes because no, they have a mind of their own. And I mean, why shouldn't they? Like, what what did I do to develop them? I mean, I got the mass on the planet, and that's about it. I didn't really do much else. So normally, what I like to do, and we might in time shift to that as well, is to just consume as many planets as I can, which is something you can do, by the way. If you press K right now, then the smallest object in your orbit will get consumed, and the mass will get added to your star. Now, that's important because if you get more mass, then you become a larger star, and larger stars can have more planets, up to a point. So if we want to have more planets, basically in our inventory, if you can call it that, then we want to get planets and consume their mass as a star so that we can become bigger. Um, normally, like I said, what I would do is just rush that process as much as possible, become like a large star, and uh, go from there and build some stuff. Right now we're gonna put a little twist on it and uh, try to keep at least this purple planet completely alive, and now the green one is actually developing life, so we're just trying to get like two of our planets to, to have life on it so that we get a shield, and then basically uh, leave our third slot empty so that we can use it to, to grab other, you know, free-roaming planets to, to add to our mass. And, you know, I'm gonna make this a uh, contest for my little planets here in orbit. Like, whoever out of the, the two that don't currently have life ends up developing life first is the one I'm gonna keep. And the other one, well, I'm, I'm eating them. Let's just, let's just, you know be completely honest here, that's what's gonna happen. I'm a, a hungry little star, I wanna become even bigger. The only way to do that is to consume one of these guys. It's, it's, a, it's a rough world out there. We still add to the weight of the life planet as well, and it's kind of important that you can do that. If you press uh, the one key, you can also see the individual development of the planet in question. Uh, as you can see, it could also become a small star if we worked quite hard at it. And that is actually how you get multi-star systems, which are very useful because actually uh, having a second star increases uh, the amount of planets that you can have as well, in addition to the tier of star that you have normally. And it kind of acts like an additional life, basically. Because right now, if you're in the, the solar system stage of the game, um, your planets can die. You can do whatever you want with your planets. Like, you can use them as battering rams, projectiles, whatever you feel like. Um, you will not, you know, get essentially a, a restart, if you will, uh, just by losing the planets. Because you're no longer a planet, you're something slightly greater than a planet, you're an actual star. But if you lose all of your stars, then you get booted back to the beginning of the stage, and you gotta, you know, go all over again. So in that regard, having a second star is like kind of having a one-up, where, you know, if you, if you lose your initial star, it's like, well, it's still not over yet, you, you can still keep playing because you still have a star. And you can have a third star. Uh, there's an actual achievement in the game to get a 40-star system. It's kind of a hassle, and it's something that I actually want to do, though, even though it's probably going to be a very long video if I end up, you know, recording it, which I would like to do. But I think it's an interesting process, even though it is tedious. Like, the, even, even the achievement is called Grind Star, because it's a grind. It's a chore. But it's kind of a fun chore, though. We'll, we'll get around to that as well. Uh, you know, you probably don't want, like, 40 stars, 40 extra lives sounds amazing, but you also have to consider that the physical size of the solar system that you are increases, you know, with every every single celestial body that you add to it. And stars are really notorious for that. I can't remember if we've already seen a, a multi-star system here, but it's kind of rough because, uh, you know, like, they have to orbit each other as well. Oh, and it, it seems like Purple Planet is not along for this world. Well... Survival of the fittest, my man. Survival of the fittest. We're gonna have a, a double life planet. 
well, two life planets, rather, but you could call it a double life planet. That would be kind of a, a way to refer to it, I guess. Oh, and here's a Nomad right now. We just crushed him with our planet. Again, in that in that regard, the, the game is not completely realistic. Obviously, space is not two-dimensional, or at least, you know, I hope that you realize this, but, I mean, it took me a while to realize that, but, but I've, I've known for like a week now. So you can definitely collide with stuff. Uh, I feel like that was, you know, something that the developer had to basically make to keep the game simplistic. And I'm kind of happy that they did that, though, because it makes the game slightly more fun as well. You can just hit stuff if you want. You can avoid hitting stuff, which is a skill all of its own. And it just kind of adds to the experience. So what is our current objective? Again, it's whatever we decide to do. My objective right now, in case you're wondering about that, is to just become a medium star. And in order to do that, I'm going to consume planets. Not my life planets, though. I'm leaving those alive because, you know, I've, I've cultivated them. They, they make nice little ships that I like. We could fight people with them. I don't want to kill those guys. They're, I wouldn't call them my friends. Like, we don't really know each other. It's like, I don't know what they are. Look, they're like pets. Let's call them pets. They're like my cat. I don't have a cat, but in this case, I have billions probably on my two planets well billion equivalents and you know you don't just want to lose those pets they, they have their uses i mean one of these days they might even give me a shield that i was talking about i don't know feels like 10 minutes ago eventually they'll do that well this planet is developing life I guess we're switching. That's again another thing that you don't get to control. If I was really, you know, like paying attention, I could so, I could notice like, oh yeah, this this other planet has you know more mass than my, than my previous one, and then I won't get to keep it. But that's kind of the the attitude you have to have with this game. Like, don't get too attached to anything that isn't your central object in that regard. You you definitely want to be concerned with your star, but your planets still come and go. And especially if you get into a couple little slap fights with other solar systems, like, you'll get some insane stuff happening to you. You're, if you have a favorite planet, um, be prepared to have it, like, knocked out of your orbit by, like, some, some asshole solar system that just rams you and doesn't even kill you. He just, like, knocks all your planets away. And then you gotta get them all over again. But that's kind of the fun of the game as well. Now, that is a big nomad fleet. Again, we can, we can fight some of them. We got, we got a couple ships. Maybe we won't even ram into our own ships. I mean, we killed like two. That's, that's good enough. That's good enough for me. So now we could theoretically go all the way up to six planets, but we could still become larger. We can become a large star. And I would like to. Your size changes a little bit in terms of the star. It's mostly color coded. Um, but you know, you'll get to see that as we basically go on. There's also options in the game. I don't know if they're available right away where you can have like color shifting stars. I think they might be tied to uh, story mission completion. So we'll eventually get that and then I'll showcase like some of those physics options as well. Uh, so scared we would kill our gunboat. I don't care that much, but it's kind of cool to have one of those. I'm pretty sure, you know, we just lost it anyway because it went back to fight whoever those guys were. We're on our way to becoming an even larger star. And, you know, we can still keep adding stuff to, to our existing planets. That's always a fun time. Like I said, I'm more reverting to my basic playstyle here, which is usually become large star and get uh, eight life planets and then just roam around. And I did just, you know, by saying that, spoil the fact that once you are a large star, your capacity goes all the way to eight. But we might not stop there, to be honest. Like, there's a, there's a couple fun things that we can do, because I've already also mentioned that if you have a, a second star in your system, then you can also get additional planets. Now, that is capped. There is a hard cap on that. I mentioned due to the achievement system that you can go all the way up to 40 stars. There is no cap on how many stars you can have in your system, although I feel like if you're, you know, an actual human being, you'll probably stop once you get the 40 that you need for the achievement, because it's kind of a grind to do so, and it becomes so massive that uh, most of the screen is just your solar system. Gets a little bit hard to maneuver, let me put it that way. But nonetheless, there is a cap on the number of planets that you can have, and that cap is 10, and you get to that cap by being a large star in a multi-star system. Now, we're probably going to try to, to get there, and we could already, you know, kind of look at which planet we want to increase. It seems like this planet, this, uh, grayish uh, one is 
doing pretty well in terms of mass. So we could focus on him a little bit. Oh, and now we're getting more features explained to us. There is a way to save your systems in this game, in the options menu. I'm going to show you, just, just so you see this, so you can go here, save systems. You got this many slots. And you can basically just respawn as those guys infinitely. Uh, it is very important that this feature gets explained to you, because for the story missions, a lot of them are incredibly random, or just, you know, you kind of have to ram your head against the wall a couple times to figure out what you need to do to be able to finish them. And until you figure that out, uh, if you would have to just go back and, you know, do, like, the whole development stage all over again, all the way from, like, Asteroid, or even just, like, at the planet stage from, like, a small planet, or as a solar system from, like, a small star, it would be a little annoying. Uh, so in that regard, yeah, it's, it's definitely important to save a couple of your systems. I'm not gonna save this one currently, because this is a work in progress. Like, we can do way better than this. We're just getting started. But over time, we'll definitely uh, use some of those slots in there and, and try to make some cool stuff. You know, we already could have saved our max stage life planet. And actually, I feel kind of silly for not saving it. But I, you know, I was lost in the sauce talking about all sorts of nonsense. I didn't have time to go into the options menu. Well, pause menu, really. So that's okay. We'll just have to do that once we go back to the planet stage. We'll get around to that. For the time being, we're just hunting planets, if you will. And really trying to get this gray planet to uh, increase in size. Now, the, the one thing you may have noticed is it's very important uh, when and where you get the different planets into your orbit, because they're going to stay there for the most part. Uh, you can change that by colliding with something and then uh, getting them back into your orbit once they, they fly away, but it's kind of a, a hard thing to pull off at the best of times. Alternatively, what you can do if you don't like the direction of the orbit is you can grind against other objects stop the movement and then you know like nudge stuff so that it goes the other way i'm gonna try to see if we can do that i need like a, another solar system to, to pull that off though ideally because i'm pretty sure if we just hit like a planet it would mostly just cause a lot of damage to the object in question i suppose with a shielded planet it wouldn't matter that much it would definitely survive but i'm looking to do it with like the outermost uh purple slash pinkish planet here Oh, and there's a life planet there. Now, again, as you can see, these guys are hostile right now. Except for the part where if I consume, like, a planet, now they're our friends because we live in the same solar system. It's, it's a pretty simplistic, you know, AI thing, but it's fun, though, and it makes perfect sense. Like, you know, you want to be good friends with your neighbors. So this is another solar system here. And as you can actually see now, uh, because of our life planets, we actually have a shield. It's not completely online, but, you know, it's doing some stuff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try to change the orbit of this purple planet, just for the fun of it. I feel like our angle of approach was not ideal there. Maybe we can use this innermost, uh, you know, civilized planet over here to, to do this. Oh, we just lost it. Well, that's a shame. It is a lot easier to do with the shield of planets, but I kind of don't feel like losing those for the time being, especially because one of them we would like to, you know, turn into a star. And I believe it is this one. Yeah, it is indeed. Here's another life planet. You know, now we're friends. There were a couple more blaster shots there. Obviously, that uh, giant enemy craft spaceship was rude to our uh, new purple planet. But they talked it over. It probably took a couple thousand years. For us, it took like two seconds. But, you know, time, time is a flat circle, as they say. So we almost have our second sun. Well, I say almost. We need like 50 more mass, which is quite a few asteroids, if we're being absolutely honest. And I suppose in the meantime, we could actually uh, increase the mass of our original star, which we've successfully gotten to a large star, so go us. So now really, we just want a friend in need. We want another little friend for it. And as you can see, with the amount of life planets that we have, we have a larger fleet now. We have quite a few ships just going all around us. I think we lost our, our crap ships, but uh, we do have a lot of gunboats, which is always nice. And, you know, all the solar systems, they also move around all the time. Like, this one's maybe, you know, trying to charge us or running from something bigger. We don't know the context. It's just, you know, we can get out of the way. Like, hey, just, you know, you go ahead, buddy. We could also fight them. And fighting is quite easy. You just kind of park yourself nearby and you have your ships duke it out. And it seems like it was, in fact, running from something even larger. This is probably a multi-star system over here. Oh, it is actually just a large system. 
similar to us, but with more life planets, so a bigger fleet as well. Now, the, the size of the fleet isn't everything, and you know, I know this sounds like a huge amount of, of cope right there, but it's, it's, not, it's not like that, I swear. It's very important, like obviously you are at the, the greatest advantage if you have either as many life planets as your opponent, if you will, or even more than them, because then you just have more ships. But the angle of approach is also very important, and uh, right now, you know, we're definitely just kind of playing it cool, letting the the size of the fleets just go uh, go against each other and, and duke it out, basically. But if I really wanted to, to play it smart, then I would maybe take my uh, actual lifelines close to the engagement so that their turrets can start taking part in the action. And we'll try to do some of that since our purple planet is on like a good orbit for this. And like I mentioned, having the orbit overlay on for these fights is super useful. So like right now, despite the fact that, you know, the, the other solar system has way more ships, it kind of didn't matter so much. And again, because it, it uh, has like a, an isolated planet here, we can just, you know, go next to it and shoot it a little bit. But there are nomads, so we're gonna run away a little bit as well. And, you know, for a, a very simplistic game, like I'm just pressing the WASD keys, essentially, for the time being. I, I'm not personally directing any of these, these combat maneuvers, I'm not actually telling my ships where they need to go. It gets a little complex once there's multiple star systems and also nomads involved. It's it's quite intriguing. I've I really like this part of the game for that reason because it's just so simple. Like you you could have anybody play this. All they need to do is is have a concept of which key, you know, takes their star system in which direction and that's basically it. But at the same time, there will clearly be a person that is better at like solar system versus solar system fights than another person because there is a skill involved in it, but it's just not a skill that you can explain as easily as, as, I don't know, like in an FPS, like, oh yeah, just be accurate. Because this is more positioning than anything else. And as you can see, that planet from the enemy's star system was just completely isolated, so we kind of got to gang up on it with our planets. In that regard, we have some pretty good orbits, accidentally, for this fight, because they're mostly, you know, matching up, despite the fact that they have different directions. And the stuff that doesn't match up is basically the, the closest to our sun, so it's, it's harder to get to in that regard. It's, it's a longer rush distance. So, you know, we're accidentally winning this war, basically, just by flying next to this thing. And this is what I mean, like, it's now becoming much more of a dynamic battle, because the, the solar system that we're fighting, if you notice, is also now going faster. It's, it's basically either trying to, to rush us down, or most of the time just get out of the way, basically. And we did just, you know, nab another planet there. Um, I think, yeah, we can we can take it. I don't think we have a lot of mass on our large star yet because we did just level it up, if you will. And, you know, we could be totally ruthless and be like, oh yeah, we're gonna, you know, chase this solar system to the ends of the Earth. Well, the ends of space, rather. But I don't, that's not my objective, though. Like, if you remember, that's, that's not what we're about. It's very easy to get, you know, sidetracked because we're not doing any of the waypoint stuff, but that's not what we came here to do. We came here to, to make of a solar friend, actually. We're just looking to, to get a second star and then, you know, be on our merry way in terms of progression. This was just a nice little distraction. I mean, you know, it was nice for me. Probably those civilizations on those planets wouldn't agree, but uh, the, uh, the, the victors go to spoils, I guess, and, you know, dead, dead people tell no tales. So I guess we're in the clear. Like, you know, they started it, if anybody asks. You, you all saw it, right? I'm pretty sure they shot first. But yeah, and this is kind of what I'm talking about. You see, we collided with some asteroids, so now our, our uh, friendly little ships are just completely in overdrive. Just like, protect the planets! We are under attack by the space potatoes. And, you know, that's a little sad for us, because we're like, uh, guys, actually, I, I needed those. I, I wanted to, to put those into your planets so that it would get bigger. The, this, you see, this is, this is the, the problem. I feel like this is the greatest message of this game, that poor communication kills. If I could only tell my little, like, pet life forms that have so graciously made a shield for me and have fought in my name for millions of years at this point from their perspective, that, like, it's fine, just let me collect the asteroids and you'll have even more planet to, you know, to, to be on. Like, you'll get more space, you'll get more life, it's gonna be fantastic, everything would be fine. But the thing is, like, I call them on the phone and then they never pick it up, it's a whole thing, I... I don't know, man. Maybe I shouldn't have insulted their shoes that one time when we went to that party. I don't feel like they ever recovered. Like, you know, it was I was kind of out of line. I get that. But but I was just saying how I felt and what I thought. You know, the lesson here is definitely, like, just communicate better. 
but we don't have an option for that. So instead, we're just gonna fly around and, and get, you know, more asteroids to increase mass, and eventually our, our little ships will get completely freaked out when one of their planets turns into, like, a star, and they'll be like, yo, what the hell? I was living there. And you're like, well, yeah, that's, I was gonna tell you to maybe move, but, you know, you ignore my calls, so... Really? Like, am I the asshole, or are you the asshole? I guess, you know, again, dead men tell no tales. So I, I feel like, you know, the people that die on the planet as it turns into a, uh, a ball of plasma that we could call a sun, I don't think they get to have an opinion after that. So, and that's, in this instance, fine by me, because I definitely want a another star, and, you know, those people, they could have lived somewhere else. They have ships. They could have just moved. That is the one thing, though. In, in this game, no life form actually likes to move. Once once they're on a planet, that's that's where they are. They never want to go anywhere else. And uh, that's also another interesting little thing that, you know, despite the fact that you have life, life does not colonize in this game. It, the, the life planet stage is based completely on the mass, aka the size of the planet, rather than, you know, adjacent planets with life. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, some people might be like, oh, that's kind of sad because I was hoping that, you know, life would seed life. And it would be a cool concept, but I can understand that in a game about building mass, like, you want your game to be themed around something. An idea that kind of keeps the whole concept together. And in this case, you're playing as celestial objects that generally just want to become larger. So it makes sense that you would tie it to the same system, in my opinion. To keep it, you know, easy to understand and thematic. And we just nabbed another life planet, so we're, we're, you know, mightily on our way here. And I just scroll past it, unfortunately. Yeah, we have seven life planets. Which is kind of nice. That's, that's almost a dream. I still want more, and I guess we should, uh... Just scroll through here, and take note of how much mass we have on each of these guys. It definitely still seems that this life planet, uh... On our, I want to say, second orbital ring is the one that we can turn into a star. Well, it's it's still gonna take a while, but you know, it's the closest by far. And we'll work away at that. Now, um, basically for the different missions, the story missions, a lot of them will require a uh, different kind. Well, I wouldn't say require, because the mission itself never explicitly tells you like, hey, you might wanna be this kind of a planet for this. You'll have to try, you know, and, and do the mission to realize, like, okay, maybe I'm supposed to take a different approach. Uh, so you'll, that's one of the other reasons why it's a very good idea to, to save a system, or maybe even multiple, because you never really know what you might need. In my experience, it's basically always easier to, to scale down from a system, simply because you could just consume the planets that are in your orbit. So, you know, if you have, like, 10 planets around you, even if you're just like barely a large star and I don't know, like a small star alongside it. Um, if you need something smaller for the story mission, it's just infinitely easier to, to just press K a couple times and, you know, become a larger star basically. And then you don't have to deal with all the planets if the mission that you're playing requires you to just be a star and not really have anything in orbit. But again, as we basically, uh, go on with the video series, you'll get to see plenty of that, um, I, because I would like to actually showcase every single story mission, and the reason that I would like to do that, and the reason I will make the save file available as well, is primarily because once you do, that unlocks some options for you in the game. It basically gets you more and more physics options unlocked. Now, the physics options don't impede progress, kind of? They, they do, but they don't. Essentially, uh, if you want uh, achievements, and if you want the completion marks for the uh, the later physics options, then you definitely want to do the missions without the physics, op physics options or the god options enabled. But at the same time, you can still do the missions, it's just I believe they get marked like yellow or something, uh, which is basically the game's way of saying like, yeah, you did it, but you didn't do it without cheat codes, basically. Although I will say that a lot of the physics options aren't cheat codes so much, they're more modifiers, if anything. They're not like a straight cheat code where like, oh, you're invincible. I don't even think like anything like that exists in the game. I suppose, you know, if you get enough stars in your solar system, you can make the argument that you're invincible, but it's not really true though. There's, there's, a, there's a couple things out there that can definitely ruin your day, <laughs> as you'll get to see later.
Oh, there's there's something below us, and you can kind of already see that we're being, uh, you know, we're we're pretty massive as far as like a solar system goes. So moving around, uh, I wouldn't say has become impossible, but it's definitely more difficult to maneuver without hitting anything. And this is why life is such a good thing to have in your systems, because the shields are just so nice. Uh, at a, an actual high level, when it comes to like, you know, very uh, high experienced planets, the shields are just so useful that collisions kind of don't matter. If you collide with another planet, that's a, a different story entirely, because that will in fact matter. That will probably put your shields offline for a little bit, and uh, that could, you know, leave you high and dry if you're still being attacked by something, which is why, you know, an enemy solar system ramming you can be such a huge problem, because it'll take your shields offline, and there's probably still ships uh, around that solar system that are now gunning uh, your poor planet down. And, you know, all these uh, phasers, blasters, and missiles, and, and other weaponry, well, it strips mass, just like impacts with other objects. It takes a little bit more time, but over time, your, uh, your system might get destroyed by blaster fire, basically. I mean, we've, we've done it to other systems. It could happen to us. It's a crazy world out there. But for the time being, we're mostly seemingly in a kind of safe and uh, sound area in space itself. We've only encountered a couple of nomads. It's it feels like it's it's mostly just us, you know, floating around here. I'm totally fine with that. Again, I would say I'm lonely, but there's like probably billions of life forms on my my planets here, so I don't think I can really complain. But again, do they count if they're just like? I don't even know if you would count them as cats. I feel like they're more like pet rats or something, just because of the sheer size difference. Well, we have more life now. I guess you know got that going for us for the most part oh and the, the one other important lesson here is you know take note of the the orbit and where your planet that you're working on is situated like right now since i'm trying to get the second orbital ring planet some asteroids uh it pays to basically go in that direction especially if it's the only thing in that direction it's like right now for example you can see the the little asteroids swarm i guess to the right of us uh, i'd love to you know go in there and collect some of them the problem is that I'm not gonna have a, an easy time getting my, my planet close to it and only that particular planet close to it because of the orbits. And this is where it gets a little complex. Although we need like one single asteroid, so maybe we can nab that one, and we did. And you know, life as we knew it on that planet is gone because it's now a, a burning hot ball of plasma. But on the bright side, we can now have 10 planets. And I suppose that's what we're gonna do. So let's let's focus on that, and we can take a look at at the uh, the brand new star that we have. It's it's a uh, a small star. It's still growing, and we already have a large star, which could turn into a neutron star. Now, um, in that regard, neutron stars are not a straight upgrade in that uh, department. But you'll get to see that as we go on. Right now, I'm still hunting for for more planets. Strictly so that we can actually uh, save a system for later. Although, I don't know. I, I feel like I should, though. I think it's a good idea. It'll be very helpful for the story missions as we, as we keep going on. And getting a life planet is just so much easier than getting a large system. So I don't mind, uh, you know, doing the, the max experience life planet all over again when we do the, the planet stage uh, story missions. But as, uh, as you've been watching, you know, this has taken a little while. I wouldn't say it's, it's taken a long time because I've had a great deal of fun just, you know, floating around space, making a star friend and, and getting uh, planets with life around, around me, basically, I guess, because I am the star. I'm the star of the show, I'll have you know. That planet is just going to be food for us. Well, not really food for us, but food for our friend here because they're just tiny, they're still they're still growing. There's nothing wrong with growing, but you know, we can help them out. So that's kind of what we're doing now. Uh, in that regard, for the time being, we don't care so much about the asteroids. Now, you can use the asteroids uh, for a multitude of different reasons. You can use them to increase your mass, as you've been seeing. Uh, because of the way the orbit works around a lot of these planets, you could also totally use them as like an offensive measure. I mean, it's really fun to take, like, a planet into orbit, uh, well, to take one of your orbiting planets into, like, another solar system and, like, crash the asteroids into a planet there. Takes a little bit of setting up, let me tell you. Like, right now, you know, it's, we're so far away. I guess, I guess, you know, we can make a, we can make a big connection here and try to do the thing that I just described. If maybe they don't take our asteroids. 
Uh, yeah, we crashed like a single, a single asteroid into that planet. What did it do? Not much. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, not a whole lot, but it did look really cool. And I mean, let's be real, it's probably in the history books of that civilization. Like imagine an interstellar war where the enemy planet literally gets into close combat with you and fights you with an asteroid. Like that's kind of nice. I feel like, you know, that's a that's something you would write in a book to have your grandchildren remember it. Maybe come up with some countermeasures, like I don't know, surface to air missiles seems like a, a pretty decent idea. So this uh, solar system is a little bit more advanced than we are in terms of mass. Uh, life planet wise, I think they were also doing better, but we've already demolished one of their planets. And now we're fighting. And you know, this is the, the cool part about fighting in this game. Like, I'm not really the one fighting, I'm just doing the flyby. I'm just, you know, standing next to this thing. And everything else is just happening. Now, obviously, like I mentioned before, positioning is vitally important because the farther away your planets are from the conflict, the, the more time it's going to take them to get to the fight. Your uh, turrets don't really take part in the action if you're too far away. So there's like a bunch of uh, little nuance to these, these battles here, essentially. But again, you can also just choose to ignore that. You could just as well, you know, fly around, have a good time and not really care too much and you'd be completely fine doing that as well. In fact, it's very fun to do that just as well. Like I said, I keep bringing it up, but I really, really like this game for its simplicity, for just the, the chill nature of it. The soundtrack is absolutely wonderful. I think the visuals themselves definitely work. The, the one gripe that I have with the game is you can show like people screenshots of it and they just won't care in my experience. It's, it's the kind of game that unless you see in motion maybe you'll get inter like that's when you'll get interested in it but uh, not so much from like a static screenshot because it looks very stale just when it's not in movement uh, which is why i'm hoping that you know by making a video series about it maybe i can generate some more interest because i do really really like the game and we've actually now created a medium star from our star friend so that's always a good time and to be honest with you that's kind of what we're gonna keep doing like, we have a, a brand new life planet over here. This is going to be planet number nine. So we almost already have our max life. Well, not max life yet, because in order to get that, we would, we would also need max experience on all of our life planets. But we are getting along the way. Uh, and before we really go crazy, I'd love to actually get the 10th the developed planet in terms of life so that we can do just that and actually save it and uh, go on with our lives. And like I said, the safe feature exists in the game. You should never feel bad for using it. I do think later on, uh, once you're mostly done with the story objectives and whatnot, I personally have way more fun uh, just you know, starting the game and creating something new every single time rather than just falling back to, to the old stuff that I've created. But right now, we're going to actually save this star system here and we can always basically get this back now. Which means we can uh, go around consequence free and just plunder space for more mass. And that's what we're gonna do. So, one of our, um, you know, life planets gone. This planet gone. That planet hopefully will be gone because we eat it as well. And we're just looking to increase the mass on this little star here. Essentially, when you're a multi star system, uh, I, I don't know the details, but as far as I'm aware, the lowest mass is going to be the one uh, consuming objects. Basically, you're feeding stuff to the tiniest boy, is kind of the idea. And once the things are more equal, I think it's like it gets evenly distributed for the most part. Like, you know, one guy gets one planet, other guy gets another planet. We're gonna try to save that life planet. You, all of those little dots are missiles. Now, if they hit, um, yeah, that planet would be gone. Like those, those, uh, those things actually strip the shields quite fast. And in addition to doing that, they can also take away quite a bit of mass. Which, again, you might you know think that I'm a, a horrible monster, but I don't care so much about the civilization on the life planet. I care more about the mass of the planet because at a certain point we're gonna eat it as well. We're mostly focused on ourselves right now. We're being a selfish solar system. But again, our planets don't get to complain. Like, we provide them with, with light. And, like, that's kind of all that we do. But, hey, hey, that's kind of a big deal. And, like, look at that. We got two large stars now. So what's what's the next stage that we can get to? Well, I already kind of mentioned it. It's the neutron star. Now, neutron stars are going to be kind of interesting. And I'm, I'm really hoping that we get to, to showcase that with the current level of, of uh, 
development that we have, because I genuinely don't remember what happens when we turn into a neutron star with uh, such a huge amount of planets. I'm looking forward to finding out, let me put it that way. You know, we're still gonna grab like asteroids here and there, and also in order to consume, as far as I'm aware, in order to consume um, a planet in your system, I believe you need to actually consume the asteroids first. So over time, you could very easily, if you know, you're just going around grabbing too many asteroids, uh, get into a situation where you get a third star, for example. And I would normally say that's never really a bad thing. It does mean that potentially it's going to take you longer, like even longer, to actually, uh, you know, increase the mass of the individual stars, simply because of what I mentioned before, where it's like, yeah, you know, like your smallest star is going to get all the, the food, and then your next smallest star is going to get all the food, and eventually it's also going to get evenly distributed. So, like, right now we have 10 life planets again, which is wonderful, but, uh, you know, some of this has got to go. We're going to keep it for the time being. There's no reason to, to consume a planet right now, because there's nothing else to grab. But the moment we find another planet, however small, one of these planets, the smallest, obviously, by process of elimination, is going to get eaten. And, uh, case in point, there goes one of the plants we had, and we got another one. Now we could choose to consume it right away, and there's no reason to hold on to it because it, this one doesn't even have life on it, so it, it doesn't have a, a benefit for us basically holding it, if you will. But again, there's nothing else to grab just yet, so I, I don't feel like eating it quite so early. Let's, let's see if we can get a replacement before we actually end up using it. So far, no signs of that, but, you know, eventually. Oh, there is a planet there. I wonder if uh, that one's going to be okay or if we can actually nab it. No, 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 the other solar system got it. That's fine. You know what? There's plenty to go around. As you can see here, there's another planet right here. In, in that regard, the, the whole interstellar war thing that I was mentioning is kind of silly because there's no actual reason to fight another solar system. The game doesn't, like, explicitly reward you for doing so. It, it's more like, hey, you, you did stuff, cool, but you don't get anything other than experience for your life planets, which, you know, in order for them to be really good at fighting stuff, they already probably have max level XP. So it's like, you don't really gain anything, but it's very fun to do so. And that's kind of the, the motto of the whole game, where you can do a bunch of stuff in this game, despite the fact that it's you know, very, very simple. Like, the concept itself is simple, and the execution is very simple as well, but it's it's tremendously enjoyable. And all the incentive you get is like, hey, but wouldn't that be fun? Like, wouldn't it be fun to park next to another solar system and just fight it? And just watch, like, for five, maybe ten minutes as, as your ships just keep being spawned and fight another system? Case in point, we could just do that. Like, right now, we could, we could just do the thing I'm describing and, and witness it. And again, it's one of those things where, like, I'm doing very little. I'm not even actually moving right now. But it's still immensely fun to, to witness this. It's a spectacle, and if you go a little bit into it with your brain, and I, I never have a problem doing this, like, imagining the conflict slightly more zoomed in than this, imagining, you know, all those giant ships, like, fighting each other, like, the blaster beams and, and the missiles, like, just hurtling through space, it's really cool. And like trying to, to come up with a reason as to why these these uh, civilizations are actually hostile, even though it doesn't matter to us, like, you know, we're objects in space, we don't care about the philosophical differences between our guys and their guys. For us, it's just like something cool to watch. But you have to imagine that if, you know, there are actual people living on, on those planets and on my planets, then there's got to be a reason why they're fighting. Maybe, I don't know, there's a gesture that the enemy solar system's species does that is akin to, I don't know, like, the worst possible thing you could call someone in our society. And, and all of a sudden, it's like, well, there's no other option, we gotta kill them. They, they had their, I don't know, their pinky out, and with us, that means that, you know, you are the worst person ever. And it's, it's kind of fun to imagine stuff like that, basically. I'm gonna eat that planet, mostly because it had nomads close to it, and, uh, yeah, the nomads will just strip mine it, for lack of a better term. Um, and I really wanted it mass, like wanted its mass for myself. But essentially, you're you're already seeing most of the game, funnily enough. And and you know, a part of me is like, wow, like that seems that sounds a little boring when I put it like that. But at the same time, like I'm having such a good time just floating about, collecting mass and doing all this stuff. 
So again, I, I, I don't know, dude, it's, it's tough. There's a part of me that's worried that no one else in the world is interested in this game, but, but at the same time, I'm like, I really want to show you guys that it's, it's worthy of your time because it's just greatly executed. It's super fun. And you know, we're, we're going along the way here. Oh, I guess, oh, they, they have life on that planet. I was about to say, where did, where did the red little dudes come from? But then I saw that it's that planet. How are our stars doing? Let's, let's take a quick look here. How far away are we? Oh, and let's not get killed by nomads. So this one is, you know, it's like a little bit past half. Same, same deal here, actually. We're doing quite well on, on the way to being a neutron star. Let's, let's do more of that. Let's just, uh, you know, eat a planet, get a planet, eat a planet, get a planet. And if that's all I would say for the next hour or so, it probably, you know, you'd probably still get the entire commentary, basically. But I'm going to try to talk about different stuff, obviously, maybe even non-game-related uh, things. So, you know, in the uh, in one of my Killing Floor videos, I mentioned that I would uh, do the series, actually. Well, I, I didn't explicitly state that it would be Solar 2, but, but it was already the plan. Uh, you might have noticed that I already also released a bunch of videos about uh, Killing Floor 2. I actually decided to, you know, just rapid-fire record uh, the Interstellar Insanity weapons. I wouldn't say I did a good job showcasing them. I mean, you know, <laughs> go go watch them. I think it's it's fine. There's definitely some entertainment value in those videos. But look, I'm not uh, I'm not like one of those uh, super super knowledgeable guys about the game. I I think I know enough to be kind of decent, but I don't think I'm I'm high up on that list. And I do only have well only like I have something close to like almost 400 hours on the game. But that's not a lot when you consider that there's people with actual thousands of hours on Killing Floor 2 that have a way better idea of the game than I do. And they're also way better at the game. So, you know, like, I guess I, I got to ask you, why, why, why are you even watching my stuff? But I appreciate it anyway. Uh, still, I hope that, you know, like I said, there was some entertainment value to be had there. And I had a lot of fun recording those videos. Uh, I would still like to do a couple endless videos for Killing Floor. I'm just really considering, like, what perks to play, for example, with, like, what loadouts. I'm actually uh, thinking about kind of a randomizer for that as well, because I think it could be an added challenge. Because I think if I'm just left to my own devices, I'll probably play the the three slash four perks that I really like with the, the loadouts that I really like, which is not very exciting. It's, uh, it gets a little stale, and there's not a lot of replay value there. I guess I could do it on every single map, but again, the number of maps, you know, it's, it's also finite. Eventually, we just run out of maps to go on to. So we'll, we'll figure that stuff out, basically. But I had a lot of fun recording the, the short-form Killing Floor videos, and yeah, like, I don't think I want to get into the whole guide business in, in Killing Floor, because I think there's a lot of valuable resources out there I keep referencing the, the spreadsheet, obviously, but that's because it is incredibly useful. Like, if you ever have any kind of, uh, you know, game mechanic question about Killing Floor 2, I feel like just go look at the Google Sheet that some, some people have created. It will have the answers to anything that you might be wondering about. And I, I just don't think that my knowledge is at the point where I could uh, make something of value, like a guide of any kind. Like I, I played like a lot of Firebug and, and Demo and Berserker, but I don't think I've played enough where I could like tell you what you need to do to be good. Because I don't think I'm good. Like I'm not even playing on Hell on Earth, for example. And I think that's like the, the basic bar before you get to make like an educational video about Killing Floor. You should, you know, first consider like, yeah, maybe you should know how the game's played. But, back on the topic of solar system shenanigans, we now have a neutron star. Look how pretty it is. Like, I, I can't stress this enough. It looks beautiful. I, I love the neutron stars in this game. They look so nice. They look so nice instead that I want another. And you may also notice something else, if you are very attentive, that uh, in the place where it says what the next stage for us is, it just says black hole. Uh, yeah, essentially the neutron star has such a high mass, and again, I'm not a star scientist, this is all just, you know, stuff that, that I've, I've gleamed from the game for the most part, and like, I did, you know, at one point have an education, I don't know if I still have it, I guess, I guess maybe I lost somewhere along the line, but, but I do have some, a very little knowledge about celestial objects, and I know that density plays a huge role, so basically what's going on now is that our neutron star has a massive weight, but it's also hyper dense, which is why it's smaller, surprisingly, than our large star. Now, uh, it doesn't currently show, but actually, neutron stars 
can have fewer planets attached to them than a large star, even though you need more mass for it, simply because the gravity is now not as good, basically. It's not a stable form of star, and that is represented in the game by the fact that eventually, if you keep acquiring mass, it's going to become a black hole, which is what we actually want to do. But we don't just want one neutron star, we want two. So that's kind of what we want to do now. Now, obviously, we could just consume all the planets that we have and then just be two stars hurling through the sky. But I don't want to do that because I feel like that would be incredibly lonely. And, you know, we've had these planets for a while. Like, this one has 63 kills. That one has three. They got, they got some stuff going for them. I, I wouldn't want to just murder them. Not yet, anyway. You know, the day will come when, when I will eat all of them. But that is not today. I'm currently looking for a nice, neutral planet that I don't know just to eat. It's simple. It's gonna be that one. And now we got double neutron stars. And this is the part where, you know, we could do the munchies and just eat all of our planets. And we might, in fact, do that just so that we speed up the process of becoming a black hole, because that's also incredibly fun. But there are more planets here to actually uh, take. Now, you know, obviously, um, well, not necessarily obviously, but I feel like it needs to be mentioned that perhaps we're only going to get one of our uh, one of our stars to become a black hole because of the way the the whole mass distribution works. And right as I say that, we just got another star actually. So in that department, that's not necessarily ideal. Now, there's a couple things we could do. We could, you know, purposefully lose this star if we wanted to. Uh, it's a little difficult to do so, but not impossible. We would need another, at least another sun, ideally another solar system. Um, we would need to lose the, uh, the shield on it and then collide with something of huge mass, like the central star of an enemy solar system. Or we could just uh, do the thing that I keep referencing and, and, you know, unleash the day of the munch. And I think it's going to be that. I think we're going to, now that we're a triple star system, we're just going to mash K a couple times. And, uh, you know, now, now we got our two neutron stars and we got a large star that's halfway to becoming a neutron star. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, now that, you know, we left our civilizations without a home, they have become nomads. So I was actually you know, telling you about this before. But essentially, this is how nomads are created in the game. Well, they're also just spawned randomly, but I feel like mechanically this is essentially how they get created. And why there's so many of them, because, you know, every single planet that becomes a star that had life on it ends up leaving that life behind. And without anything better to do, that life then starts roaming the space that exists and they just start shooting at everything. And could you blame them? I mean, their home turned into like a star that you can't live on. I would be kind of mad as well if I came home one day and my house was just, I wouldn't even say on fire, like it was just made of fire. I couldn't really go into the goddamn place, could I? So it's not really ideal. So now we're collecting even more stars for our triple, triple neutron star. And this kind of showcases why you might want to eat your planets if you get to the neutron stage a little earlier. Because, you know, because of the asteroid shenanigans, we ended up getting a third star that we quote unquote didn't want. It's nice to have, but not necessarily that useful. We'll, we'll work with it. And I mean, look, once we get a, a third neutron star, it's gonna look even more dazzling than it does right now. And, you know, then we'll be back on our way to becoming a black hole. But for now, uh, we're just gonna, you know, fly about and do that. Now, obviously, as the size of your star system decreases, you get slightly more zoomed in, just so you can actually see what's going on. So it's, it becomes easier to maneuver, but you see less of the world around you. But it's not as important for you to see the world around you because it is easier to maneuver. It's, it's quite a simple, you know, principle, but I think it works for the most part. Oh, this is quite nice, two, two stars just hanging out. Let's see if we can actually get them. And that was kind of not ideal. We're going to see if maybe we can still get it. Maybe the nomads have already killed that particular planet. And I'm afraid they have. The, the gunboats are very, very good at dealing with planets that don't have shields, for example. And that just goes to show that getting stuff to orbit you is not always super easy. And look look at the, the fabulousness that we have right here. It's a triple neutron star. It's just, it's just nice. What can I say? It's pretty nice. 
but we're not done yet. We want more. We, we definitely want even more. Now, obviously, there are a couple downsides to just going around as literally a trio of stars, and as you just notice, one of the downsides is that we obviously, not having any life, uh, we don't have shields. And not having shields is awkward because it does mean that we lose weight as we crash into stuff. And there's a lot of stuff that we can crash into when it's, you know, just us, like us three, <laughs> rolling across space, basically. And because we have uh, our own gravity, it becomes very difficult to dodge things. Especially in a multi-star system. But you kind of just gotta take, take that, like roll with the punches and do your best. Uh, keep in mind, though, that like we have an actual, like, you know, 3,125 mass. And an asteroid on a good day might take like 20, which is still not that bad. But over time, it does add up. Like, trust me, if I would just keep hurtling into asteroids and never absorbing anything, then yeah, we would probably end up, you know, losing our stars. And the interesting thing is that the stars, I believe at least at the neutron stage, uh, it wouldn't just go back to a large star. But I'm, I might be mistaken. I'm obviously too lazy to try that right now, because my objective in my brain is to become black hole. So that's what we're working towards right now. So obviously, if you wanted to, you know, have your cake and eat it too, what you would do once you get to the neutron star stage is to ke still keep around uh, a couple of your life planets so you do have that shield, but then, uh, you know, maneuvering might be more of an issue for you. You gotta take the good with the bad, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I'm kind of happy to just be three stars for the time being, because it looks really cool, and I always like being completely zoomed in on a neutron star. In fact, uh, and again, I don't mean to belittle our creation here, but I kind of prefer just having one a neutron star for that reason, because it just looks super cool. I don't know what it is about the neutron stars. I guess I just really like the vivid color for some reason. But this is fine. This is more than fine. And uh, there is a, you know, immediate benefit to it. And let's not, uh, you know, dilly-dally, let's not uh, delay this discussion further. Like, black holes work obviously very differently than, than our stars currently. Because a black hole, well, it, technically there will be things that orbit us as a black hole, but it's going to be for a very short period of time because, um, you know, our gravity is such that it gets pulled into the center. And a black hole works very differently than the stars that we currently have had up until this point. Essentially, you know, as you see, when we get hit by an object as a star that doesn't orbit us and we don't manually consume it, we lose mass. Now, black holes can only consume things. That's kind of what they do. Um, so instead of losing mass from running into things, they gain mass. But they need an incredible amount of mass to, to really fill themselves because they're hyper, hyper dense. Uh, but you'll get to see plenty of that going on. Now, incidentally, that means that because of the way the, uh, the mass gets kind of evenly distributed, uh, among our multiple stars, one of these stars is going to become a black hole, and the other two will get instantly consumed by the newly created black hole, which will then uh, gain the mass from those stars. And once you're a black hole, stars are some of the tastiest, tastiest things that you could actually find in the whole game. Right behind uh, other black holes. Because, as we mentioned, the game kind of works on the Katamari principle, where anything smaller than you is food, anything bigger than you is a threat. Now, black holes are like the ultimate expression of that, because once we get there, you'll get to see that there is an overlay for the game, uh, you know, that shows us the objectives. It's also going to get used for marking threats a little bit, because uh, I mentioned the level scaling. I think I referred to it as such where, you know, whatever stage of the game you are in, you'll start to see more objects that are similar to you. So right now, because we're a, a multi-star system, but without a lot of planets, we haven't run into that many solar systems with a great deal of life on them. But trust me, if we just spend the time to get, like, two or three planets that have life on it, suddenly we, we would actually have a bunch of solar systems to potentially fight. Um, that's kind of how it works. Now, once you become a black hole, other stuff also becomes a black hole. And you can either consume it if it's smaller than you, or you can get consumed by it if it's bigger than you. And all the bigger black holes, once you get close to them, will be marked on the overlay. Uh, now, there's also another very easy way to tell when there's a, a big black hole near you. It's literally going to pull you towards itself. So, you know, if you notice yourself being unable to, to move away from the left, for example, that might be because there's a gigantic, supermassive black hole there. Maybe. Just, you know throwing that out there as an idea. So maybe we don't go that way. 
Unless, of course, you want to be food for a gigantic black hole. I mean, look, I'm, I'm no one to judge. If that's your, your objective in your brain, then why not? I mean, look, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I did at one point uh, spend, I want to say, probably an hour in this game after I spawned a black hole, once I had like the option enabled, to see if I could, like, how, how large of a black hole I could make that wasn't me. And once it became like 1 16th, the size of the screen, I was starting to get concerned because every time I would die, um, I would instantly spawn like far enough away from it where I still could not escape. And basically I was just caught in a death loop until I decided to, to just, you know, respawn as a different object entirely in order to, to wipe the slate clean. And I'm pretty sure that by creating a black hole of that size, I was able to kind of soft lock the game because nothing was spawning because anything that spawned got immediately consumed by the black hole that was the size of a golf ball on my screen. Now keep that size in mind because in about like, I want to say five or 10 minutes, you'll see how big quote unquote a black hole is. I don't know like how much of a, a space scientist you are viewer, but the thing about black holes, and we've already kind of touched upon this as, uh, as far as the neutron stars go, despite the fact that they're massive, and you know, that's a, a pun intended, they have huge mass, they are quite small because of their density. So, like a black hole the size of a golf ball on my screen is uh, ridiculous. Now, the scary thing is that in real life there are black holes that size, and somehow we're okay. So that, that's what I mean. Like, if you if you start going into the, the space stuff, you'll realize, like, Jesus Christ, man, this is the real horror movie stuff. Not like a guy in a rubber suit. It's just stuff in space is scary. But that's kind of the thing, that, you know, we're so far away from it all that it doesn't necessarily affect us in the way that we think. I wonder if I can catch that. Catch that planet. Uh, let's see. No, it died. I mean, that's kind of fun, though. We, we fetched ourselves, almost. Played fetch with ourselves, rather, but... It didn't succeed. Maybe the next one. So we are over halfway to becoming a black hole with one of our, our stars. And I'm going to see... Let's not start a mission. So this is... Huh? So I believe this one is going to become... Right now, the one uh, going to the top part of the screen, the top most uh, neutron star, is the one that's going to become our black hole eventually, based on the numbers right now. Unless, of course, we collide with a bunch of stuff, like we just did. That could definitely change things, but let's hope that we don't keep doing that, and uh, we get to just increase our mass rather than lose mass. Like I mentioned, though, we have so much that we've already consumed that a couple asteroids... They definitely make a difference, but they don't make as big of a difference as they would for a planet, for example. And you have to remember that back when I started recording this, um, we were just one of those asteroids. Like, just one of those tiny little asteroids. Look at, look at us now. Look at how far we've gotten. We're three neutron stars now, dude. Space potato no longer. Well... I mean, you know, there won't be that many space potatoes once we get to where we want to be either. And that's uh, coming along quite nicely. Let's see if we can speed it up even further. Let's see if we can find even more planets. I, I do think that if I was just a single uh, neutron star, that maneuvering would be a lot easier because I would have slightly less gravity. So stuff wouldn't get pulled quite as hard into me. Not even necessarily into me. Like, I feel like the illustration is quite good in that department. Uh, the stuff mostly gets pulled, you know, into the, uh, the point between all three of my stars rather than anything else. But nonetheless, it does mean it's hard to dodge stuff occasionally. Again, it's not that much of a concern because the planets, they do get pulled, but so far I think we've only had that one planet we played fetch with that uh, actually ended up colliding with us. So we've had a decent track record in that regard. I feel like, you know, if we had, uh, if we had insurance on our stars, which is kind of a weird concept, we wouldn't be paying that much. We've, we've had a single accident. I feel like, you know, that's kind of okay. It's a big, it's a big universe and... Like I said, if we put it into perspective, this has probably been like billions of years that we've been in it. So colliding with a single celestial object in all that time, yeah, I feel like a pretty good driver. Not gonna lie to you. 
can't tell if if that stuff is being pulled by something even larger than than me or if i'm just pulling it inadver inadvertently and that's kind of the interesting thing about the game that tons of stuff spawns all over the place and you can kind of follow the objects you know like the path of the objects to figure out where they're headed what's pulling them is it a bigger star system is it potentially a black hole because if you go far enough into the game those start spawning as well um, most of the time they're stationary but if they consume something massive enough uh it can also alter their movement so you know you can occasionally run into a black hole that like speeds past you with the i don't even know like like a race car and then suddenly you're like, wow, I, and there's no way I'm going to dodge that, huh? And yeah, you won't. If, if it's big enough, it's literally just going to pull you in and, and basically end you. But again, it's a casual game. You get to come back afterwards. Oh, now that was rude. I was going to eat that planet. You see, if my reactions were better, I would have just consumed it. And then we would have been fine. And I'm not going to play fetch with that other planet. Because the last one didn't go so well. I'm just gonna look for something else. There's plenty to go around, that's kind of the thing. Although, you know, I say that and now there are, I was gonna say, like, no planets on my screen. But suddenly there was one. I, I also gotta mention, I love the background, like, the space illustration with, with the nebulae. I believe that's the, the plural there, but it could be wrong. I guess maybe just nebulas? I don't know, dude. Nebulae sounds so much fancier. I'm gonna go with that, even if it's not correct. It just looks so nice. It looks lovely. Like it's it's a it's a sky I could I could definitely gaze at for quite a bit. Like, like I said, I I am hoping that you're getting that uh, that impression as well. That I I am very very deeply in love with this game, for lack of a better term. It just I don't know. It really clicked with me many many years ago. And I remembered it recently, and I've been having such a good time, like, playing it again. I wanted to, to record it. Uh, this is a new save file. I don't actually know if, like, all of my stuff got wiped. Yeah, yeah, it did. That's actually really good. That's really good, because we'll get to do everything together on, on recording. And that was kind of the point that I was trying to, to make, basically. Now, we're getting mighty close to becoming a black hole, so... Let's, let's just see. We are, in fact, now a black hole. We did just get an achievement. And, uh, you know, the entity is being very helpful again, telling us that the only thing that can defeat a black hole is another black hole, and uh, we'll be notified about the other black holes. Now, that little thing over there that we just, like, flung away, uh, that is a dark matter asteroid. That's kind of what black holes are made out of, and we really want to eat that star, and we just did. Now, as you can see, we have a huge amount of mass, like, a hideous amount of mass, actually. Um, but in order to become a big crunch, we need even more. We need to consume everything, essentially. That's, that's kind of our main deal. And these asteroids just don't really do much for us, to be honest with you. That ship, not a lot. I need stars. More than stars, I need smaller black holes. Definitely small, though. I'm, I'm a bully, basically. And that's, a potentially a bigger black hole. Thankfully, we did just consume that. And that's the uh, notifier that I was talking about, the little warning sign there. If we keep going that way, it's eventually going to, you know, mean that we are consumed by a massive, massive black hole. And we have to, you know, respawn as a different black hole. Because luckily, the game is nice enough to, to basically be like, hey, you know, you, you died technically, but I'm going to give you a second chance. Occasionally, also random black hole spawn, just like that one. Um... The thing is, like, it's not even very random, it comes down to the dark matter, basically. Whenever a dark matter object gets destroyed in the game, it becomes a black hole. Occasionally, though, they're so small when we're so zoomed out, like we are right now, that you no longer really get to see them. And as you can see, like, we are currently... Because you have to keep in mind, the black hole is actually just the, the black hole in the center. The stuff around it, the, the gray little effect that you see around it, is basically, as we're consuming matter, it's the plasma that we're just venting out into space. Because we're consuming stuff at such an alarming rate that uh, it ends up, you know, doing that. We create, like, a, a cloud, a jet of plasma uh, around us. And, uh, but, you know, the point I'm trying to make is that essentially the event horizon of the black hole is just, it's the black little circle. That's, that's what we are. We're only the size of a planet. Not even the size of a star yet. And yet, we have significantly higher mass than anything we've been so far in this recording. It's, it's density, man. It's, it's truly astonishing. And by eating that other black hole, we've become infinitely more massive. Because once again, 
it, it was just barely the size that, that we were, but you gotta keep in mind, like, how much mass is in that? It's, it's truly staggering, and now we're hideously huge, but we also gotta be careful, because, you know, if there's a black hole the size of us, then there's probably a black hole that's even bigger than us right now. So that's why we gotta tread lightly and, and try to, you know, consume stuff, but not get consumed. Let's see if we can pull that off. I mean, we're getting mighty close here to becoming a big crunch. I, I got a good feeling about it, although we are now, you know, like, running out of star systems to consume, which is always a concern. You're like, wow, like, how many solar systems have you had, man? Is this a buffet? Apparently it is, for me at least. Those, those black holes are very, very nice, because again, those are the, the tastiest treat that we can actually find. Stars are, are neat, but it's, it's another black hole, such as that one, that will be the thing that we need. And you know, that might be a, a little bit of deja vu, because if you remember the beginning of the game, that's how it all started. The big crunch leads to another big bang, and then we're just another space potato. We're just stardust that got turned into another little, you know, asteroid. And now we would get to do it all over again. But as the entity is saying, we're not really done, because that's not necessarily the point of the game. It was the point that I was trying to make, that right now this was our objective. We wanted to go from, from this, an asteroid, all the way to a black hole, and we did. But as you can still see, there's plenty to do. And in fact, now I'm going to, you know, lift the curtain a little bit and show you the story missions. So this is the story mission log. It actually tracks uh, your progress over here. You can also delete uh, progress on the missions themselves if you would like to redo any of them. And it kind of goes to show, like, you know, in the asteroid stage, you have essentially nine different missions. It's four kinds of missions, but as I mentioned, some of them are multi-stage. Planet similarly has a couple different missions, and Star has the most with 12. Uh, there's also a final mission once you do all of this stuff. That's basically, like, the final mission, the final boss fight. You'll, you'll get to see that, hopefully, as, as we go on. Um, and we already got a couple achievements, as you can tell, so there's a handful of stuff you can do if you're a completionist. So far, we've gotten Big Crunch, which is probably what most people will get as the first achievement, because it's kind of what the game, you know, tells you to do. Just increase mass, and the easiest way to, to increase mass is to eventually become a black hole, and then just consume everything. And because we were a multi-star system, we also got Betrayal. And as I mentioned, that gave us a nice little kickstart at the beginning of our black hole stage. Uh, but for the time being, this is the first Solar 2 video, and as I mentioned, if you go down into the video description, you will find a Google Drive link to the DRM-free version of the game. Be sure to, to give it a try, download it. I think I have all the different uh, OS, you know, compatible installers in there, but if something's missing, just, you know, shoot me a comment or, like, whatever, get in touch, and uh, I'll try to, you know, make it happen if it's missing. And over time, in the same drive link, I will also have the completed save file, once I do have it. But right now, as you just saw, we're 0%, because we, we didn't actually do anything of value. We just had a lot of fun, but I guess that's valuable too. Either way, I really hope that you had a good time watching this. I know I had a lot of fun actually making it. And we'll be back with some more in the next Solar 2 video. We're probably going to continue as an asteroid, but actually go to all of these waypoints and try to get some stuff done for the fun of it. So, see you guys next time.